Hey, what's up you guys? Nick here. Um, we are actually sitting down to develop some tin types. Now, I wanted to do a video on mixing and developing fluid, but I ran out of time leading up to the tin type booth, so I didn't get a chance to do a video on that. When I order more chemicals, I'll go ahead and do a video on that. Again, this is the Rockland tin type bulk kit. 4x5 is what we're using. I'll link it down there. It is not sponsored. So let's kind of go over our setup today. So right here I have our actual developing solution. So this is developer. It's got a very pungent, very strong smell. It's a three part developer that Rockland has made to create the false positive image. And then this one right here in front of me is the fix bath and it is Kodak hardening fixer. I'll link that down below as well. That's what actually stops the developer process as well as creates kind of a hard coating over the photo and it makes it last longer. And then over here I just have a water bath. Now after you develop these, you're supposed to rinse them because the photo gelatin absorbs the fixer. And you're supposed to rinse them for approximately 15 minutes in warm water. We're gonna soak them in this. I'll rinse them upstairs and I'll share the photos with you as we go along. Now we actually have eight photos to develop today. We have the two we shot in our shooting tin type video from last week. And then we have some older ones that I've had on storage. I know at least four of these are super overexposed because I have my calculations incorrect. So we'll probably develop those ones last and we'll stick with the ones that I believe are gonna come out well. So what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna turn on the red light up there and I'll have my headlamp on and we'll go through and do this. But before we do that, I'm gonna kind of explain what we're doing. So with the Rockland kit, the developer takes between four and eight minutes. When you drop the plates in initially, it'll turn completely black and then the image will start to appear. Now there'll be some white residue usually on the image after you're done developing it. I try to develop that away, but at about the eight minute mark I stop and I'll move it to the fixed bath. Now the fixed bath will actually clear up a lot of that. It clears that, um, that whitish, almost yellow fog to the image. So I'll actually do this for approximately 10 minutes We'll fix it for about five minutes, and then I can turn the light on and show the image. And then I'll turn it off, and I'll start developing two more as I fix those two, and then move them over to the water bath. So hopefully the red light gives us enough light. I'm also gonna turn the ISO up really high, so if it's grainy, I apologize ahead of time. Let's see how this works out. All right, you guys, so again, I wanna apologize for the graininess. This is the best I could do to try to show you the images actually start to appear and develop. So we'll start with the two images we did today. Now remember, we shot number three at the tree, and number four was at that house. And they might actually get it washed out because of how bright that red light is. But first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my timer. Now the reason we are able to develop directly in red light is because these are blue light sensitive only. They don't pick up red light whatsoever, which is actually really cool because then you can actually watch the image show up. So. Here we go, moment of truth, you guys. So just like I loaded them, you take the screens off, you unfold the bottom, you just pull it out, drop it in your developer, pull it out and drop it in the developer, I usually push down, make sure they're completely submerged, and then you have to agitate it. So this is usually how I agitate it, and the agitation helps remove the excess silver and develop the image itself. As you can see, the edges and corners have started to turn black as the developer starts to work its magic on these plates. Now when they're in the developer, they actually soften up a little bit and you can scratch them really easily, so I try to keep the plates separated as I develop. You can see the plates are getting blacker and blacker. Again, I don't know how that red light is going to affect these. I usually don't do that. I usually don't develop in this much light. I'm kind of hoping they turn out. So we'll see. I think we may have overexposed these. Either that or the red light had an effect on them. Because usually, uh, wait, I can see the house and I can see the trees. It's just not turning out correctly. I mean, you can kind of see the tree and you can kind of see the house, but these were definitely overexposed. Like I said, I don't really shoot a whole lot outside with tin types, just because I have less control of the environment. 
And this one you can kind of see something. So yeah, these two plates were a bust. I apologize about that. These are the two that we took today. They did not come out well. So we're gonna fix the fixer because I can just clean the emulsion off and reuse those plates. So we ended up with one partial success. I threw it in the fixed bath. So like I said before, the fixed bath lasts 10 minutes. It's not a very good photo. It's very overexposed. It's actually, her name is Taylor. She is the daughter of the photographer that I assist with and I share the studio space with. And then I've got two more of hers we're gonna go with. So right here we have the plates developing. Over here we have the one plate that's kind of a failure in the fixed bath. And I usually time these all about the same time. So I can usually do four plate or two plates at a time, move those over to the fixed bath, and then develop two more. And this is what I said was talking about when I said I needed an auto agitator or an assistant because I had to do all this in between shooting at the tin type booth. It wasn't all failure though. We did get some fantastic photos at the tin type booth. All the ones I took there came out great except for that one. And then we had the weird one with the black dot, which is in the last video. So hopefully these two come out all right. I don't know how they're gonna come out. That's part of the reason I love this so much is because if we can get one good photo out of this whole mess, I will be extremely, extremely ecstatic just because of the amount of work that goes into taking these photos and to have at least one come out well would be just absolutely fantastic. And that's what I meant in the Jolly Look video where you know, you don't have the instant gratification as you do with digital, and you kind of have, it's kind of a guessing game. It's not really a guessing game. There's math and science behind it. But when you're making your own film, it is a little bit of a guessing game. And because of that, you can always run into some failures. Now, we're just having a string of bad luck tonight with no good photos coming out. Actually, these two are coming out. These two are a Valerie. I forgot I took these two. The calculation was correct, and they are coming out fantastic. So these ones will get the whole process, fixed bath and everything. Valerie looks great in these photos. I don't know if you can see those images. I hope you can. And she might be a little bit blurry because she had to sit still for like 25 seconds in order for these photos to come out. So we're on about 45 seconds left and I'm actually gonna push it past that four minute mark. That one's a little, actually, I'm gonna move these over to the fixed bath now. All right, you guys, we actually had some successes. We had two successes, basically, with Valerie. We're still on the clock with those, with a couple minutes left in the fixer bath. But let's go over some of our failures and discuss what happened. So this one right here was a tailor. You can't really see it that well. Um, what happened with that one is it is way, way, way overexposed, as well as this one of Taylor. So we had two overexposures, and those are the ones that I actually calculated incorrectly when we were shooting in the mountains, and I had set it at a the wrong ISO. I was looking at 0.5 instead of one ISO, and because I was at 0.5 instead of one ISO, I overexposed them majorly. So we have another overexposure, and you can kind of see the, the glittery effect on that one. So several several overexposures, and these are actually turning because I have the lights on. And then the ones in the backyard were also overexposed. Yeah, very, very much so. All of these were overexposed, but the two I have in the fixed bath right now, with just a few seconds left on it, uh, Valerie are actually almost perfect. And I will rinse them off and we'll get some great photos of those. They just have about 10 seconds left. The timing on this is extremely important. So out of the eight or so photos we developed in today, we got two that were good. Now it's completely different from the shoot, the tin type shoot I did as a photo booth, whereas I had one failure. On this one, we had six failures, and that's kind of what happens in this game. Now, the big difference was, is at the tin type booth, I was in full control, I had my lights, I had my light meter, I was able to gauge the amount of light that I was shooting in. Whereas in the backyard, yeah, we had the light meter and I had gauged it, but I had gauged the tin types at too low of a sensitivity. Now, at the tin type booth, I took one photo with my gauging and developed it 
as a light check. And by doing that light check and going through that process, I was able to determine whether or not this was at 1 ISO or 0.5 ISO. All of these photos, I didn't have that option. Some of them are actually pretty old. I've had these photos laying around for a while. But I do want to show that we did get some successes. So let me get these out of the fixed bath and I'll let you take a look at them. We got that one there. I'll actually show this one right here. Get a little bit of that fixer off. And we have this one here and it's a little overexposed, but that's okay. So this one here was a little overexposed, but you can still see her. It looks really artistic. If a photo came out like this, I would discount it if the client liked it. Whereas the first photo I showed you, and I'll show you this one real quick up here. Whereas the first photo, I would most definitely charge full price for. That one came out really, really, really well. Um, Valerie's gonna be really happy with this photo. But yeah, so that's the basics of actually going through and developing your Rockland kit. Again, we had some issues. Those were my fault, completely my fault, but we did get two really good images. When I do a booth, I'm a lot more careful and a lot more on top of things. I'll usually do a light test where I'll actually take a photo and develop the photo to make sure that everything is calibrated correctly and that I have the correct ISO predicted for the plates because again, it's anywhere between 0.5 and 1.5. It totally depends on how much silver content is in the gelatin. Um, the more you melt it and let it harden and melt and harden, the higher the ISO goes, so it's kind of a guessing game right at first. And then each batch seems to have a slightly different silver content almost, and all of that mixed together, we, we get mistakes. It's part of the process, but we did get the one perfect photo, the one perfect photo that made me so excited because the amount of work that goes through. You guys have seen the videos up to now and you've seen how much of a process everything is and how much goes into this. So again, if I'm doing like a professional tin type booth or I've got a client lined up, I will do a light test and I will develop it right there on the spot to make sure everything's good. But mistakes happen and that's part of making art. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up you guys and start getting ready and planning the next video. So thank you again so much for joining me. Please like, comment, subscribe. Hit me up on Instagram or Facebook, and you guys have a wonderful night. Thank you.